Hello, this is Bill Worrell with Virginia Cooperative Extension. For today's episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest, I'm going to take you to a meal to see some of the products we make out of white oak. I'm Michael Harold, and I'm the Raw Materials Procurement Manager for Speyside Bourbon Stave Mill and Speyside Bourbon Cooperage. Our primary business is the production of bourbon barrels. Today, we're at Glade Spring, Virginia, which is one of our five stave mills. We own another stave mill in Bath County, Virginia, two in Ohio, and one in Kentucky. Our process begins with white oak logs procured from Virginia landowners and adjoining states. Our production is only white oak uh, for bourbon barrels uh, for the qualities that white oak possesses to make that process possible. In Glade Spring, Virginia, we procure 7.5 million board feet annually. Uh, once the logs arrive here, they'll go into our stave mill, which you'll see in the process later. We cut those logs into three foot or two foot sections. The three foot sections eventually make what's called a stave for the sides of the barrel. The two foot sections make what's called heading for the tops and bottoms of the barrel. Once those logs go into the mill, we do what's called a quarter saw process where the logs are cut in half, then to quarters, and then staves and heading cut off those quarters from there. You'll see that process in the video as well. When the wood leaves this facility, it goes to one of our two cooperages. We have a cooperage in Atkins, Virginia, and one in Jackson, Ohio, and that's where we actually make the barrels at. We thank you all for visiting today. I hope you enjoy the process. I'm Josh Chandler, plant manager at Speyside Bourbon Cooperage in Atkins, Virginia. At our facility, we bring in raw stave and heading that was processed at one of our stave mills. We use some of our state-of-the-art joining equipment to process the pieces into what will become a world-class bourbon barrel.
My name is Brian Bond, and I'm an Extension Specialist in Virginia Cooperative Extension, a professor housed in the Department of Sustainable Biomaterials at Virginia Tech. Bill asked me to talk a little bit about the special characteristics of oak that make it unique for making barrels for wine and spirits. So I want to talk about a couple of reasons or a couple of the characteristics of white oak that make it unique for tight cooperage or uh, barrels that are going to hold liquids. There's a couple things here. One, uh, we've got the, the uh, extractive content that's contained in the heartwood here. So if you look at the darker colored material, we call that the heartwood. It has a lot of tannins and extractives in it that are useful to the flavors of wine and spirits. You see the light colored uh, material here is called the sapwood. That's where the living part of the tree is. That's where active water conduction takes place. Most of these cells are involved in conducting water from the roots of the, of the tree to the leaves and carrying sap back down uh, in the sapwood region. However, some of these cells, you can see they look like spokes on a wheel. These are called wood rays and they carry liquids across the cross section. And we'll talk about why that's important in just a moment. First, I want to kind of zoom in and, and focus on these, on these wood rays. Uh, and let's, let's cut a quarter of this log out so we can look at it a little bit closer. And so if you look at it really closely, you can see what we call the growth ring. A growth ring is one year's of growth. Uh, here's an example here. This would be the early wood where we have the tree begins, the leaves come out on the tree and it begins to put down new wood fibers. And then this would be the late wood. So this entire structure here would be called one growth ring. Um, and then if we look at these spokes that look like spokes on the wheel, this is the wood rays moving in this direction. They're involved in active water transport in this direction. Uh, and you can, uh, I'll put this black line in here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Right next to that black line is a white line called the wood ray. So if we're gonna make something uh, like cooperage, a barrel, uh, that's gonna hold liquid in it, we wanna be able to prevent water from escaping that, that container in this direction across the wood ray. We also wanna prevent it from moving through the cell structure we see here in the cross section uh, so that the barrel or the cooperage will actually hold the liquid itself. So a couple of things uh, unique about how they produce these staves at the plant is they saw it a particular way. Most lumber that you get at Home Depot, Lowe's, any, any, any of the home stores is what we call plain sawn lumber. Uh, and it's cut in using a pattern that you see up here on the top left. It produces a board, if you look at the top surface, that looks like this. Probably 90 to 95% of the lumber out there is, is plain sawn. Quarter sawn is done specifically to produce a unique figure. You can see here those wood rays we were just talking about. If they're split, they produce a unique figure that's used in certain types of furniture, like stickly furniture. But for the purposes of staves and cooperage, we're quarter sawing it to prevent any liquid from passing through those wood rays. And we'll sh I'll show you another example in just a moment here. So if we look at the actual staves from, from Bill's tour, you can see the growth rings are oriented perpendicular to the width of the stave. That means our wood rays are actually angled across the width of the piece. So there, there's no way if you use truly coarse saw material that you're gonna get leakage through the wood ray right? Because it doesn't go from one surface to the other. It's going across one edge to the other in these examples. So you can see here in this stave at the top, you can see the individual growth rings and the wood rays are running across the piece. So the openings of the wood rays will be on the edges of that stave, uh, which will be pressed against other edges and therefore liquid will not be able to pass through the wood rays. The other thing that's really unique about white oak is something called tylosis. Tylosis is formed when the wood cells die in the sapwood and, and are transformed into the heartwood. This is about the same time the extractive and tannin content is produced in those cells. Uh, you can see an example of red oak on the right. Red oak, uh, even when it turns to heartwood, the openings of those cells, we call thus elements, remain open. So you could actually take a short piece of red oak, dip it in some, um, some dishwash detergent and blow bubbles through it through the length of the piece because these openings are very large. In white oak, these openings are uh, closed up, both in the, in the early wood and in the late wood, and they're closed up with something called tylosis. So there are certain cells that are associated with these wood rays that fill in the opening in the vessel elements when the wood is converted from heartwood to sapwood, okay? And the advantage of that in white oak is that if these cells are completely closed up, no liquid can pass through them. Whereas if I were to make cooperage or a barrel out of red oak, 
liquid would, would come pouring out of those, out of the, out of the wood and out of the cells. So this is an example of what that tylosis looks like in an electron microscope. So you can see the, the tiny little wood cells, but these big openings are the vessel elements, and they're completely in, uh, closed up with this thing called tylosis, which prevents liquid from flowing through them. The last unique characteristic of, of oak, which is why you wouldn't use other species like locusts that have tylosis, uh, unique thing about oak would be some of the uh, so, uh, chemical structure of oak, but the cellulose, the hemicellulose, the lignans, and the tannins that exist in the oak provide flavor. All kinds of issues with flavor for, for wine, red wine that's made, and for spirits of different types. Uh, and sometimes, you know, in the barrel making process, the barrels will be toasted or charred depending on their use to kind of bring out some of these flavors. But it's the tannins themselves and the chemical structure of the wood specific to white oak that gives a lot of unique flavor. So in the stave operation, you're seeing really three unique characteristics of, of, of the white oak. One is the fact that we've got the tylosis that's in, that includes the vessel elements so the liquid doesn't spill out. You also have the chemical structure, particularly the tannins that produce some flavoring. And then finally, the way they cut it, quarter sawing it specifically, uh, keeps the liquid from being able to come out of the wood rays because they're on the ends of the piece rather than on the wide surface. I want to thank you for joining me today for the virtual tour of the Speyside Stave Mill and Cooperage facilities. Tune in again next Friday for another episode of 15 Minutes in the Forest.